Why didn't I realize the name? It has high metabolic rate. They go zooming by the boat. Then it has a low metabolic rate. And the question is always, do they change their molecular mechanisms? This is a good example of a paper because if you've done the hard work, if you've done all the physiology, but you don't have the equipment in your lab to do this, you just send them to me and I do it. And then your paper looks as if you've done something metabolic and biochemical, then you get a big grant to go on another ship. It's another strategy. It's good. And that's what these animals do. There's every possibility that they were not going to turn down their metabolism in this way, because really it's only part of the day. These are the quickest change, 12 hours, 12 hours. You could ignore that. You could do it in another way. They don't. These guys do a ground squirrel, even though they're only down for 12 hours, not down for two weeks. So it's, it, it's good for any animal. It's better to do an animal that's easy to catch, and you don't have to go on a boat. But the reason this is a blow up is this is good for any animal. There's so much to be done at the molecular level on marine animals, which are not done because of a huge barrier. For some reason in science, there's a huge firewall, literally a wall on fire, between we do eco-evo, we do eco-physiology, and it doesn't matter what biochemistry is because it's a black box. We trust the black box. Only in the black box, Pandora's riches. So think molecular, think of the easy molecular things you can do. It makes your story so much more awesome. Well, we think oxygen consumption has gone down. That's OK. Why? They're always going to start asking you why. Guys like me ask you why. Guys like me review grants and papers. Why? Do some molecular. It's so straightforward and easy to do. You have Brad here to help you do it. You do. He's very approachable when he's here. You're going to find he's not here a lot. If you do a mark recapture study of Dr. Seibel, <laughs> He's on a boat or just off a boat where bad, bad things happen in other countries. So catch him while he's here. He's very approachable. Now, even though I probably run over my time because I've been yapping, I will quickly cover some other things. But, it, but if you have another job to go to, you can. Here's other things that actually happen that are harder to measure but are the proof of the pudding. You've heard of antisense RNA, right? You can do that in a human. So they'll inject antisense RNA and they'll turn on and off genes. Actual real animals actually use this as a tool. They're called siRNAs. So our animals, when they turn things off, not just use microRNAs, actually make on their own crazy messages, crazy things that then turn off other genes. There's so much more to be found. I wish I was 29 instead of 109, because there's great things to do. So antisense RNA is actually a thing that's native and natural. If you want to turn off HIF, and they do, they want to do this in, in uh, tumors of the gut. For instance, tumors of the gut love H HIF. You do it in a natural way. You don't start injecting crap into people. When you look at an organ, polysomes, monosomes, ribosomes, that gather together and stick message RNA so you can make proteins, monosomes dissipate. They disappear. If we could learn how cancer cells could have their polysomes dissociated, cancer would end, and here's why. Without a polysome, you can't make any new proteins. If you can't make any new proteins, you can't proliferate. Cancer could still be there, but it can't get bigger. This actually happens naturally in these organs. It doesn't happen in you. If I dissociate your polysomes, it's with chemicals that will kill you. And some tissues retain their polysomes for a little while, but only to make some proteins. Only some proteins have these IRES sequences. 99 off, 1% on. We can't do that either. I can't reach into your cancer cells and say, look, you can make anything you want except this key protein. Because if I could do that, I would stop it from making a transporter, and the cancer cells would die. 
These cells can do things that you can't, even though you have the same pathways, even though you have the same mechanisms. You just, we can't regulate them as humans. A lot of my students are interested in medical type things, so they're interested in these things. And when you look inside a cell, they're structurally different. These are the stress granules I told you about. There's some in the nucleus and there's some in the cytoplasm. If we could actually grab up these and keep them from growing, we would again have a way of regulating cells, turning them off for a short period of time and then letting them go back on. So these little prisons are flexible. Different proteins in them, they keep messages from being translated. If you're a ground squirrel and you warm up, they break, but we don't know how they break. We don't know how this prison break occurs, but if we did and we could turn it off, we could then regulate and turn off cells forever if we needed to do it. So other magical things are happening here that are not sort of known for mammals and other things. There's also a group of very weird proteins, RNA binding proteins, which are different than TIAs. And if we, uh, we're studying these, they're really hard to study too. My most brilliant students are studying these, but it's hard even for brilliant students. Most professors will tell you, I've already done it, it's done, it's finished, thank you very much. It's actually just started. If we ever knew all the answers, it would never happen. So we do have applications for metabolic rate depression. We have found enzymes that have never been seen to be modified before. We have 100 enzymes that now we can turn off, never known to be turned off before. One of them called creatinine kinase has been very important for diabetes research. Atrophy, hypertrophy, autophagy, these things are regulated in lower animals, including marine invertebrates, in ways we can't. These things happen to us. Other animals control how they happen. MicroRNA, there's so many thousands of papers you can get on microRNA, it's crazy. Epigenetics is an important area, and it's a nice fingerprint. If you really want to know if your animals have turned down, just hit that. A lot of my animals live for a very long time, and we're actively involved in what for me is uh, borderline research, antioxidant defenses, cell cycles. And somehow, evolution has encouraged every cell to core down on the mTOR pathway and then reach out to everyone else, even C. elegans. C. elegans and Drosophila are two animals which now the mTOR pathway is known for and people are rolling and rolling and rolling. So, that's it. We have very bright students. We have a website where everything is on. And you may ask questions, but if I knew anything else, I would have told you. <laughs> so pretty much. Okay, so.